Morning guys, morning YouTube people, world everywhere. So I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up. Um, reasons why I can't ever get time to work on this truck. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm here locally working. Working uh, five eights. So five days a week, eight hours a day. Um, which I thought would be pretty cool because you get the whole weekend off, but just seems like I'm working every weekend. Six, sometimes seven days a week, and uh, I'm just wore out uh, from working. Uh, another guy and me do basically all the grunt work, and I'm over it. Um, we got a couple guys that just drive trucks around. But anyway, whatever. It is what it is. And uh, I think last week I moved about 50, 60 ton of mud and rock, probably by shovel. Um, so basically, in between the railroad ties, you know, you got ties laid out like this, and then you got the track on top of them. So there's just a big mud holes. Mud. So what happens is the track sits there and goes like this called they call it pumping so the truck's just pumping and when it rains it takes all the rock that's in between all the ties and it pushes the rock down and pulls the mud up so basically we've been going in and taking a backhoe cribbing all this cribbing cribbing in between each tie with this little tiny bucket it's probably like i don't know nine or ten inches wide so it can't really get in there and scoop a lot of the rock out. I mean, realistically, it's probably doing two shovelfuls of rock uh, every scoop. So basically, you have him going ahead of me. So he's coming in. They call it cribbing because in between the ties, it's called a crib. So you got a tie. You got a tie, a tie, a tie, a tie. And in between those, they call them cribs. So basically, he comes in, breaks up all the dirt, breaks up all the dirt, takes like one or two big scoops out of the middle. And then on the outside of the ties, basically, it's me shoveling all that rock out. Just shoveling and shoveling and throw. Well, it's not really rock, it's just mud. So, and it's, you know, dusty, it's cold, it's windy, it's everything. Um... And you just got to keep going and going and going. One spot we did, we did probably like, I don't know, maybe 200 feet, which is a lot. And then the next day we had to go do another, probably like 100 feet, another 100 feet, another 100 feet. Anyway, <clears throat> moral of the story is, I've been out. So I don't know if you guys follow me. If you don't follow me. I bit out of this job, a bit out of this area. Went to this old job where, um, where I didn't like the supervisor, but I was a, I was the main guy, I was the foreman. But I bit a job as a truck driver, which he really doesn't do anything. The foreman basically says, "Go grab this, go grab this, bring it over here," and then I go do that. So, however, I don't think the manager that's here is gonna let me go so when you catch a job the manager has to release you from your current job to go to that job and technically they're only allowed to hold you for 10 days so two weeks um, and then they have to release you but because my job I'm holding right now is a higher paying job he can hold me as long as he wants but anyway <clears throat> so I'm just burnt out burnt out of it uh, yesterday we pulled a whole switch, um, which is a lot of work because you're we're pulling up about I don't know maybe 400 ties or 400 spikes, um, and probably I don't know 150 plates. Then we're pulling rail out about 200 feet of rail. We're pulling that out, replacing it with new rail. So. And I wish I could, maybe I'll draw, maybe I'll draw it for you guys real quick. So, 
this is what consists of a switch. So you got a track here, and then you got a track that goes like this, that goes out. So these are called points. This right here is called a frog. So this is a big chunk of metal. This whole thing is huge. So they wanted to remove this whole switch. <clears throat> so what we did was we had to re we removed, we cut this and removed this whole thing so that the train can just go. Because basically what's happening is is this they call it a point. The point was staying open. And uh, when it stays open, a train can catch it because the point tucks underneath the rail. Anyway, so when you remove this here, you remove this, now you got to replace. Now keep in mind, there's probably, I don't know, 90 something ties in here. So, so now here, where all this is, you have to replace all these plates that the rail sits on. Because this here is floating, so this technically probably goes like way back here. Anyway, so you gotta replace all those because there's no spikes holding the inside of the rail down. Because what holds the inside of the rail down are these big braces. So every other tie there's a big brace. But anyway, so you gotta remove this. Then we have to take this piece out from here all the way here and put in new rail. And then you gotta take this chunk out all the way back here and this chunk all the way back here with this. So now you're left with basically a track. That's just five million ties. Anyway, it's a lot of work, and it was just three of us, and the other two guys aren't the best of the guys. Um, they were working all day, but they really, they're, I don't want to say they're older, but they just, they just can't move the way I move, and my other guy that, <clears throat> me and him, work really well together. He was on vacation. He's out at the sand dunes. Um, but yeah, that was, it was just a lot of work and, uh, on top of, you know, getting phone calls and answering the radio because the dispatch, they wanted the track back and I'm like, can't have it back. And then managers calling me and big, big, big managers calling me going, oh, we were told it's going to take you two hours. And I'm like, who told you this stupid stuff? I don't know. I'm just over it. it they thought it was going to take two hours. We had seven hours of time from when we got there to when we stopped and we still went over I still went over by 11 minutes so anyway whatever I'm just burnt out I'm done I've been out I'm gonna be traveling on the road again so I can give my six days off so I'll be working eight days straight off six days so I can get back to working on this project crack pipe because I can't touch it um, just like the uh, fuel filter kit for the 4th gen for the drunken ram uh, I was gonna do it last weekend got called into work Worked all kinds of stupid hours doing all kinds of stupid stuff then got home and it was just super windy so I don't know I just I need my off time and uh, also one other thing is I worked one paycheck I had I want to say it was 32 hours of overtime on it and I basically made with with 96 regular hours plus 32 overtime hours um, I made exactly what I was making out on the road for working eight days so if I worked eight days I can make what I made probably like in 16 14 days um, yeah, so that's another reason. And then another time I made 43 hours of overtime with 88 hours of straight time and brought home $100 less than the 32 hours. So I'm over it. Done working my butt off and not making any more money than if I was out on the road getting basically half the month off. So 
anyway, just wanted to update you guys on that. That's why I haven't been able to do stuff um, because I'm here locally and they're working me to death. Um, yeah, I'm burnt out. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys have any comments about the railroad or what I do or whatever, just leave them in the comment se section below and give me a like because I'm wore out and I'm getting old. Alright guys, later.